What's up everybody? It's Carpo. So, uh, technology, it exists. It's here. It, it, I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's, uh, it's something that we've developed to enhance our lives. And while we might uh, look at it as a bane to humanity, and in some cases it is, um, it's helped us in a lot of ways. Um, I was thinking about technology and how we're going to embrace it and use it to change our future, to change the future for us and for our children for the better. Um, there's a lot of people out there with a lot of different ideas, a lot of ideas that can change the world for the better. There are also a lot of people out there just complaining with no idea for a solution. What we have to do is separate the two. Uh, separate the people who are just mere complainers, who are fear mongers, from the people who are really trying to gain a grasp on what's going on here. But with all of us searching for an answer, the one thing that we can all come together on is that uh, uh, we've abused technology as a society to this point. And uh, we've used so many in the inventions, say, two centuries ago, were so beneficial for mankind. Many of the inventions over the last 50 years have been very useful as well. But uh, there seems to be a, uh, a balance, a shift, where there's more useless junk being made, more useless discoveries being made, more research into scientific subjects that really are of no use to the average person. And this is where uh, I can, I guess, make a distinguished difference between valid, useful technology and non-useful. A valid, useful technology is something that all humans, or at least a large portion of humanity, is able to grasp and use for the benefit of helping people to live better lives, healthier lives, happier lives, or take the burden or the workload off of the individual. This is good technology. Bad technology is technology that only helps a select few, or only helps those who can afford it. Um, yet at the same time, without having those few people with all that money, and those few companies with all that money, uh, many of the discoveries may never have been made, because some of these discoveries are intense and are labor intensive and have had to have, uh, you know, billions and billions of dollars thrown at them in order to make them a reality. However, there are useless things being created too. Uh, the Large Hadron Collider, let's say, which is in Switzerland, uh, that's where they're doing experiments with quantum physics and trying to figure out uh, how to create wormholes and what happens when you uh, accelerate particles and crash them into each other. A lot of people might find that a useful thing, uh, but it's the most expensive science project, I guess, in history, and uh, uh, maybe it will be useful, but as of yet, I haven't seen anything that it's going to do to benefit humanity. You know, while people are starving, we're building these giant contraptions to try to discover things. This is why I'm opposed to space exploration. A lot of people say, why shouldn't we go back into space and travel around all the planets? We need to figure out what's going on here at home first. We can't go waste money traveling to other planets and destroying things. I saw something the other day about how the moon, they found helium-3 on the moon, and now they're thinking they can mine the moon for this helium-3 for energy. Uh, we can't even figure out how to harness our own uses. We have everything we need right here on Earth. It's just a matter of we're trying to escape this reality. Like, we're already dooming ourselves and saying, where are we going to go next? But, uh, as far as technology that we have now, it's here. We have the choice to embrace it or to uh, have this mentality, which I had at one time, where I said, you know, I hope that society crumbles, I hope that all the technology is gone and we can start over fresh. The reality is, after thinking that through for many years, uh, that's not how I feel at all. I, um, m much of this technology, um, and this, this is everything, all types of healthcare uses, uh, chemistry, uh, all the different things that we know now through research, Sometimes it's brutal research. Sometimes we've had to, uh, they've, they've <laughs> used animals for testing. We've, uh, uh, we've destroyed land and resources in order to discover these things, but now we know. And now we have this wisdom that we can use. 
So I don't want to see a society starting over. Because my thought is this. If society starts over completely, all that's going to do is create another culture that builds up to the point where they can destroy themselves again. We have to take what we've learned and apply it to daily living. And eventually something's going to give. Uh, we live in a world that's overpopulated as far as what, it, uh, what we can handle at the moment. And uh, I know that if we put all of our money and resources, all of our scientific community, all of our technology and education into bettering the human race, we really could see a light at the end of the tunnel. We really could get ourselves out of this mess. We really could make things happen. As to whether or not we will, that remains to be seen. I uh, don't have much faith in humanity to come together as a collective with seven billion people. But uh, hopefully we can get a majority rule. <laughs> and uh, uh, I really do believe in the collective consciousness, which is why these things are so important to me. And this is why I talk about this kind of stuff. Because a couple of different ways to look at it. One is to say that, well, live the life you live. Be who you are and everybody else, screw them. Uh, I don't go for that because I see that people around me just sometimes need a nudge in the right direction to find themselves, which is what I'm all about promoting is people finding themselves, yet being community too, because we're all in this together. If you don't believe in a collective consciousness, then that might not apply to your way of thinking. But for me, I, I know that as long as people are unaware of things that they need to be aware of, as long as people neglect things that are important, uh, which I find important, and this is my subjective view, but when I look around me at the media and I see, I, I don't watch the news and I don't even click on any news channels, but like I went to Yahoo today and it was just a list of nonsense. This guy shot this person and this person uh, in the military did this. Uh, this sports star did this, Kanye West, it goes on and on, and I don't give a shit about any of it. It's all completely irrelevant. And, and I hadn't looked at the news in so long, I was just like, fuck. You know, it, it's just, it's dumbfounding. It's, 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 it, it, it's amazing to me that people cannot get over this desire to know nonsense. Because people don't want to look at real information. And those of us who do are frustrated with them. So we try to open up people's minds that the garbage news that people are, are learning about and the, and the garbage products people are working on in technology um, are all pro products of our way of thinking, the way that we've been brought up to think, but the way that we've allowed ourselves to think as well. And, uh, you know, people need to make a change on their own time and in their own way, and uh, nobody can tell them how to do that. So. I welcome everyone to take action in your own way, whatever way you feel is valid. And, uh, and thank you to all of you out there who take the time to maybe make videos like this, or maybe you have a blog or a, or a web page, you know, or you exchange information at work or at home with your family and friends. Um, we're living in a very, very interesting times. Interesting times call for interesting approaches. So, namaste.